Well, I've worked at NASA since 1989. Um, I first uh, started working in the shuttle program and I worked in environmental controls and life support system. I had an opportunity to do some design engineering work, um, which kind of led me eventually into environmental work as well. Uh, that interested me so much that I went back and got some graduate degrees in that area. And I do research in an area that isn't one doesn't normally think of as part of, of NASA. I mean, generally everybody associates NASA with, with things that are up and out, you know, towards space. And all of my research has been down and in, in fact, down into the groundwater. So if you look back in time, we did a whole bunch of cleanup of parts for enabling space exploration. Back in the 60s and 70s, you know, where there wasn't a lot of regulation telling any anybody how to handle those particular types of, of, of solvents that we use to do cleanup. And so what happens is a lot of these solvents that we use to clean these parts um, ended up in the, in the groundwater. But the problem and challenge has been that, that science hadn't really evolved enough for us to know how to go in and remove or clean up those contaminants that are, are now in our groundwater. Back in the late 1990s, uh, we had an opportunity to work on a, on a product that we've, we've termed Emulsified Zero Valent Iron, or EZVI. It is an emulsion system that's made up of oil and water and iron and a food grade surfactant. So all things that are, you know, benign and innocuous to, to, to us. And because of the way we make them, they become, um, they behave very similar to the contaminant. And the contaminants, the chlorinated solvents like trichloroethylene, or even Freon, which are a couple ones that we used here, uh, they, um, they actually migrate inside that bubble, and when they come inside that oil layer, they actually transport into the inside, and they come into contact with the water and the iron, and breaking it down into something that's not harmful to you or myself or the environment. So my latest technology that we just were awarded the uh, patent on very recently, I think it was last year in 2015, um, it was it came out, but it's uh, it's called Spears. Um, it stands for Sorbent Polymer Extraction Remediation System, and it's it's kind of kind of funny story associated with, associated with it. Spears is used again for PCB cleanup, polychlorinated biphenyl cleanup, and it's t this technology is really intended to be used in sediment systems. So that's the soil that you walk in right on top that's underneath the water and that's defined as a sediment system. It's kind of a fun story. You know, I was reading some articles about trash that was walking up on, washing up on some of the beaches. And the trash, they were analyzing for what it contained and it, interestingly enough, it had a whole bunch of PCBs on it. So I thought, well, that's, you know, that sounds reasonable. I wonder if we could use that tendency or that hydrophobicity to our advantage. And I wonder if we could enhance it. So I came up to the lab one day and I, I stopped by the cafeteria on my way up and I grabbed a couple of straws, drinking straws. I put ethanol in the straws and I actually cut them into, you know, two, three inch sections and, and uh, heat, heat sealed them using my curling iron, in fact. It. And so I, I melted the ends and I stuck it in a vial with, PC, with a, um, inoculated with as much um, PCB as would dissolve into water, which isn't very high. It's like, I don't know, seven parts per million, so close there, it's not a lot. And we left it there, uh, you know, and the next couple of days I came back and there was actually a cloudiness inside the straw. I was like, oh my goodness, guys. We, you know, and working with a couple of chemists in the lab, I said, this, is, this could be good, you know, it could either be my straws dissolving or <laughs> I've got PCBs coming across. And, but we did take a, um, um, a sample inside the straw and, and do a mass spec analysis on it. And lo and behold, inside, inside the ethanol, there were PCBs. So that was a really infant small idea. And from that, we started engineering how to make it fit on the back of a barge and how to design it so that you could actually install these um, spikes uh, down to a, maybe a two foot depth. The interesting thing about the Spears um, is having a molecule of PCBs move from um, a grain of sediment that it's been sitting to for probably 40 years, that it is in a situation it doesn't like at all. Remember I talked about hydrophobicity, how it doesn't like the water it's in, but you gotta make it wanna go from point A to point B and you've given it every reason to go, you've given it something it prefers more than the soil itself and offering it an opportunity to jump across and, and get to a better spot in, in, in terms of a molecular desirement. 
So I, I've worked for NASA for over 25 years, and um, I've done some really cool things and, and had some amazing opportunities. And, and some of the best things that I've done is to be able to work with some amazing engineers and, and scientists. Um, I've had collaboration opportunities that really make all of this possible. I think I think some of the fun fun times and and some of the most innovative times are on team settings. Um, I mean, I, I recognize and, and I'm very proud to be part of the uh, Florida Inventors Hall of Fame, but I also want to say that, you know, it, it's such a collaborative experience to go and take a technology from a, from a straw and ethanol concept to a full-scale implementation, and it, it takes a whole bunch of bright people and bright minds to, to be part of that, and it's it's really been my pleasure to work with the people that I, that I have through the years, both um, in the university setting and as part of, of my team at NASA Kennedy Space Center.